So here's a short video about ratio. And in particular, uh, not, we're not going to do everything about ratio. We're going to talk here about uh, questions where you have to change one part of the ratio or where one part of the ratio has changed and you have to change other parts in order to arrive at an answer to a question. Um, the golden rule I would suggest um, for ratios is in black here, that they're very much like equivalent fractions. And, and when you change one part of a ratio, um, as long as you keep the numbers in proportion by changing the other parts uh, in the same way, then uh, you will not go far wrong. OK, let's look at a question or two. Um, let's talk about Ben and Harry and Tom. They share something. Let's say they share sweets in the ratio 2 to 3 to 5. That means for every 2 that Ben gets, Harry will get 3 and Tom will get 4. Um, and let's have a question where, let us say, Harry has 15 sweets. And they say, if Harry has 15 sweets, how many sweets do the other boys get? There's the question. Harry has 15 sweets, and if he has 15, how many will the other boys have if they, if they have them in this ratio? Well, my advice is, when you have a ratio question, is to write out the ratio, as we've done on the board, with the names of the people, all the things that are involved in the ratio above the, each of those numbers. Make sure you get the right name with the right number, of course. Um, and then once you've got that, you look at that and you think about the question. And it says Harry has 15 sweets. We want to put that 15 somewhere in our little table that we're drawing up. And the 15, where will it belong? Will it belong with Ben? No, because it's not Ben who's got the 15 sweets. It'll belong with Harry because he's the chap who's got 15 sweets. So we put 15 in the Harry column. And we say, OK, that 3 that was in the Harry column has now become 15. What have we done to 3 to make 15? We have, of course, multiplied it by 5. We made it 5 times bigger. And just like equivalent fractions, we say to ourselves, OK, if that number in the ratio has been multiplied by 5, we'll do the same thing to the other numbers in the ratio to keep them all in the same proportion. So if we're going to times the middle one by 5, we times the others by 5. 5 times 5 for Tom is 25, lucky old Tom. 2 times 5 is Ben, but Ben is 10, bad luck Ben. So that means Ben will have 10 sweets, Tom will have 25. Have we done that right? Have we times them all by 5 correctly? Yeah, 3 times 5 is 15, so 2 5 to 10, 5 times 5 is 25. We're OK. So there we go. There's an example of a simple question where you change one of the numbers in the ratio and to find the answer to the question, you change the other numbers in the same way. Um, more often, you'll get a, get the question in, a, in, in, in word form in an exam because uh, ratio questions lend themselves very easily to word problems. Here we go. It says, and this is a question from uh, Prep for tonight on 6th of December 2012 for boys in my set. This is question two. It says, general purpose concrete is made by mixing cement, sand and aggregate. And I put them in capitals so you can read them easily. In the ratio one to two to four. Reading on, it says, Harry needs some concrete to repair a garden wall. Well, you know what? That's just fluff, isn't it? We don't really need that. That's nothing to do with the maths. It says he uses four buckets of cement. Now, that is relevant, isn't it? How many buckets of sand and aggregate should he use? That's the question, isn't it? Because it's got a question mark at the end. This is what we've got to find out. How many buckets of sand and aggregate should he use? OK, sand and aggregate. Aggregate, in case you're wondering, is just like a mixture of gravel and stones and rocks that's used um, to mix up um, concrete, along with other things, cement and sand. Uh, so it's an ingredient, if you like, for concrete. OK, so cement, sand and aggregate. Let's do what I said. Let's write down cement, sand, aggregate. Initials are fine, because they're all different letters. And the ratio is 1 to 2 to 4. When they list three things and give you three numbers in the ratio, the numbers always go in the same order as the things that are listed. So it's cement, sand or aggregate, 1 to 2 to 4. And it says he uses four buckets of cement. So that four, where does that four going to go? In the cement column, the sand column, or the aggregate column? Of course, in the cement column, because it's four buckets of cement that he's given. So the four goes there, and we say, OK, that one that we did have has become a four. What's happened to it? Of course, we've times it by four. That being the case, we'll times each of the other numbers by four to find out how much sand and how much aggregate we need. Two times four is eight, so you'll need eight bags of sand. Four times four is 16. So you need 16 bags of sand. If you've got a fussy teacher, if you've got a fussy teacher who needs you to write these things out, then write, by all means, sand, eight buckets, and aggregate. I can't even be fag to write it all out. I'm going to write ag, 16 buckets. And there you go. One beautiful answer, which is just formed by taking a ratio and adjusting the numbers in the ratio by the same amount, by the same multiple. That's how you do it, really. Just read the question carefully. Make sure you write down the ratio carefully. Make sure you get the right name for each num with each number. And uh, make sure you're careful about the calculations you do. If you do that, you really shouldn't have a huge amount of problem as long as you can cope with the numbers that are there.
Good luck.